Why do we treat? We treat to facilitate postural control development. We want those weight shifts front to back, side to side, to help build those core muscles, to help improve balance and coordination. We also want to help them develop a typical and mature walking pattern. We don't want them to spend the rest of their life walking in a foot flat, excessive pronated position. Hi, I'm Ann Perret. I'm a pediatric orthotist from the United States. I've been treating kids with orthotic devices for 26 years now. And for the last five years, I've been teaching and developing new types of braces for SureStep. Now, SureStep is an internationally known pediatric manufacturer of devices. I'm here in Brazil talking about our new prefabricated devices. Uh, so what we're going to talk about right now is our prefabricated supramalar orthosis, our SMO. What do we use this device for? We use this device, our, our SMO, it was designed specifically for children with low muscle tone who pronate. So it wasn't just uh, designed to be used with children with cerebral palsy who have high muscle tone. So what is pronation? What are we trying to treat? Why are we trying to treat pronation? So pronation is a triplanar deformity of the ankle and the feet. It's not just an arch problem, which some people tend to look at it like that. So we see here the heel is involved with calcaneal valgus. And then at the midfoot, the midfoot collapses down into dorsiflexion and eversion. And then the forefoot moves to out to the side into forefoot abduction. So we have a deformity involving the sagittal plane, the coronal plane, and the transverse plane in all three parts of the foot. So not only is it a foot problem and an ankle problem, but it affects the entire kinetic chain from the foot all the way up to the head. So we can see here our little guy standing in excessive pronation. And if we look from the foot up, we see the calcaneal valgus. We see the forefoot abduction. Uh, we can't see his arch is collapsed. We see his hips, his knees come in to genuvalgus and his hips are in adduction. And then when we stand like that, if you guys want to try it yourself, put your feet into pronation, you immediately bring your weight line anteriorly. So you immediately have this anterior lean. We can see that this is affecting all of his ability to utilize his arms and his legs to develop balance and develop muscle control. A lot of times we wait to address excessive pronation. Why do we do this if we know that it causes problems all the way up that kinetic chain? Well, the reason that we wait is because all children pronate and we're hoping they're going to outgrow it or strengthen on their own. And it is true that all kids have some degree of calcaneal valgus, but all kids don't have excessive pronation involving all three planes of motion. Sometimes we say, oh, she's not that delayed, so we don't need to address it yet. And other times we say, oh, she's going to catch up. Every child develops in their own time, and they're just a late bloomer. Sometimes as therapists, we say, I bet she'll start walking by the next time I see her. So we wait to start treatment, wait for her to start walking on her own. So why should we treat pronation and when should we treat pronation? We should do it as early as possible, as soon as that child begins to put weight on their feet. And the reason is because we can facilitate lateral weight shifts. That will help strengthen the core. So a young, typically developing toddler will pull up to stand and he'll sit there and he'll practice his weight shifts and his weight line will move back and forth across his foot and back across his hips. He's already practiced those weight shifts when he's been on the ground in crawling and in sitting and in rolling. So he's really adept at it by the time we get up to pull to stand. Unfortunately, our child with low muscle tone and hypermobility has not been able to effectively practice those weight shifts. And then we put them on an unstable foot, an unstable foot, and it's really hard to shift the weight over the pelvis. 
So they end up getting stuck and spending a lot of time in just standing or just cruising. Sometimes parents will say they're lazy. Sometimes parents will say they're not confident. And the reason that they look lazy or not confident is often because they have too much instability in their foot and their ankle. Why do we treat? We treat to facilitate postural control development. We want those weight shifts front to back, side to side, to help build those core muscles to help improve balance and coordination. We also want to help them develop a typical and mature walking pattern. We don't want them to spend the rest of their life walking in a foot flat, excessive pronated position. We want to prevent bony deformities. The inside of our foot, the inside part of our foot, our medial column, doesn't ossify or harden as early as our lateral side. So if we spend all of our body weight, whenever we have our foot, one foot on the ground, on the inside of that foot, we can actually deform and change the way that that arch will develop. So we'll get bony deformities that go with the child for the rest of their life. All right, let's talk about typical gross motor development. Because we know that excessive pronation can affect typical gross motor development as well. So what we see here is the Peabody. And uh, just right before two months, we see the child lifting their head, their chest up, rolling over around fi five months, four to five months, sitting around six to seven months, beginning to crawl around between seven and nine months, pulling to stand around 11 to 13 months, and walking sometime between 12 months and 16 months. So we know that there is some variation there, but this is typically, we see this kind of progress. We may see a child skip one motor milestone and, and have another one a little earlier, but we'll continue to see them progress, and they progress very, very quickly. Now watch our little guy who has excessive pronation. Let's see him stand up. So we see right away he's crawling. But we see he doesn't have postural control yet. When he's crawling, his back is really arched. He's able to sit, but he went right into that W sitting position when he transitioned from crawling to sitting. Now we're trying to pull the stand, but he's in that excessive pronation. And so he's gonna compensate. He might move to the toes, because that gives us a more rigid foot to stand on. He's gonna have a lot of difficulty in learning to walk and to transfer his weight through his pelvis. This is a picture showing us that gross motor development. This way we can appreciate how very quickly our typically developing children are moving through these stages. We see here that between nine months and 12 months, it is a, a huge amount of improvements. And then very quickly we move from standing to walking. Within six months of learning to walk, of beginning to walk independently, we'll see kids begin to have a heel strike or foot, uh, heel foot contact rather than a foot flat gait pattern. So they are improving, refining, toning their, tuning their walking much more quickly than sometimes we realize. Now let's look at how our children, our typical children with hypotonia, just, uh, we looked at some kids with just benign hypotonia. Let's see what their gross motor skill development looks like. So we see that they're really close on this crawling position. They're not too far behind. But look how much longer it takes them to get to that pulling to stand. This is that lack of postural control. Our, our uh, typically developing peers are already standing independently and they're learning to walk very quickly. And our children with hypotonia were stuck. So we put our, uh, this patient group, this group of kids with low tone and pro excessive pronation into our prefabricated SureStep SMO and right away, we began to see immediate improvements in their gross motor development. Look how quickly they accelerated in the way that they were meeting those milestones. So we saw children with significant delays of four to six months all of a sudden move forward. 
In fact, they moved about um, about a third, they moved a little more than half as fast as their typically developing peers did in gaining these skills once we intervened with our SureStep SMO. So the SureStep SMO is giving them the stability they need to develop that gross motor uh, milestones. Let's watch our little guy again. Here's Grayson. Grayson's crawling. Grayson's W sitting. Really typical warning signs. Grayson stands up. When he first gets up, he uses a lot of arms to get himself up. He has poor postural control. He pushes through the medial side of his foot. He goes right into this more rigid position to reach for something so he can be stable. Here he is trying to walk. You see he just keeps his weight line medially. It's really hard for him to shift his weight enough to initiate a step. Here he is with his prefabricated sure step SMOs. Now normally we would have him wear shoes. We just wanted to show you that that calcaneus was well controlled in this device. So now he's beginning to uh, cruise around the furniture with much more confidence. We see better alignment. That kinetic chain alignment is so much better from the foot all the way up. Now this is two weeks later. He was working on squatting. He needs a lot of practice. So he'll wear these about six hours a day, which is basically all his walking moments. He's uh, really confidently turning, using that uh, transverse plane rotation to reach and look and explore his world. Now he's carrying a device, but it got a little bit out of his base of support, that little toy, so he fell over. We can see that as kids go through um, learning their early gross motor skills, there's a lot of failure involved. But we want to give them as much stability so we can learn very quickly from that failure. So this is four weeks later. He's still working on that body weight uh, management. Now he's taking some independent steps. And his mom is super happy. And there he goes six weeks later. Now he's looking like an early walker. He has those arms up. His weight is shifting medially to laterally as he walks. Oh, almost got that squat. But he's reaching, he's trying, he's reaching outside of his base of support, challenging his balance. Right then he's learning proactive balance as he reaches for things. Now 12 weeks later we can see that now he is a safe independent walker. Now he can walk on a variety of surfaces and now he can only get better and better as he develops postural control. So our SureStep SMO hasn't taken away any movements that are necessary to develop that postural control or his balance. By having an open heel cut out, we're getting sensory input to the heel so that as soon as that foot hits the ground, he knows it's there, he can begin to shift his weight over. Uh, having the short foot plate, once again, gives us sensory input through the forefoot. It's also designed to not interfere with propulsion. So terminal stance, we're able to get that rollover happening through the foot. And that is really critical. Typical children begin to develop that propulsive uh, phase of stance phase of gait around three, age three, after two years of practice. After they start walking like that, we begin to see the arch develop in a typically developing child. And the reason is, is because as they propel over that foot, these uh, toes and metatarsals are in extension. This extension gives us the windless mechanism which creates the arch. So if we have a child that we don't address their excessive pronation, they will maintain a foot flat gait pattern and we won't get that propulsion. So we will not develop the arch without that kind of movement. So we see here that he's done fantastic. We've given him dynamic stability and sensory input. We haven't impeded any of the movements that he needs to do on the floor. He can crawl in these. He can go from sit to stand, stand to sit. He can side sit. He can round sit, ring sit. He can sit in a variety of ways, which will help him continue to develop his postural control. 
He can go up and down stairs. He can run and jump in this device. So we see we have it here available in sizes three to size 11. And the way that you determine is by shoe size. And then you want to try the orthosis on. We want to make sure on the proximal side, I mean on the medial side, that the plastic is proximal to the first metatarsal head. So you're completely free of that first metatarsal head. On the lateral side, you want it down to the sulcus, right here, down to, the, to uh, hold, contain that fifth metatarsal head. And then it just meets here in the middle. We also want to make sure that it doesn't overlap here in the instep. Usually about a half an inch or a finger's width is, is a good amount of difference. If it's, if it's a very narrow foot and it's beginning to overlap, you can just take your scissors and very carefully trim it. If it's too long, you can just draw with a pen and then take your scissors and very carefully trim it to make it fit the right, uh, to make sure that it fits correctly. The other important thing is the parents need to pull it really snug. We're using compression to get that alignment, so it needs to give them a big, nice hug. And you need a nice supportive shoe with a firm heel counter to give them the stability to use this prefabricated SMO. And I just want to say thank you so much for letting me introduce our SureStep prefabricated SMO to you today. Thank you.